Good morning, Agape Kids Town. Hope you guys are all doing well this morning. I'm going to be giving a birthday shout out to Miss Lila. Um, Lila will be turning seven on the 30th of this month. And so I will have a little gift for you, um, sweetheart. I will, uh, by the time you watch this, I probably will have already dropped it off for you. Um, but as promised, I'm going to sing Happy Birthday. So I'm going to include Abigail too, because although I sang her happy birthday on her birthday because she's my my daughter, um, I didn't sing her for Kids Town. So I'm going to include her in there. So if you want to sing along with me, you're more than welcome to. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Abby and Lila. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I hope you enjoy your special day. Okay, guys, so we're going to be moving on and learning about um, Jacob and Rachel in this lesson. Um, you can find this story in Genesis chapters 29 to 31. Okay, um, the story point of this story is that Laban tri tricked Jacob into marrying Leah and Rachel. So he got two wives. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get started. I'm just going to start by reading the story. Okay. So um, Jacob traveled from Bethel toward his uncle Laban's land. He came to a well where shepherds were watering their sheep. The shepherds were from Haran. Do you know a man named Laban? Jacob asked. Yes, they said. Here comes his daughter Rachel with his sheep. Rachel brought the sheep to the well and Jacob gave them water. Jacob told Rachel that he was her relative, a son of Rebekah. Rachel ran to tell her father Laban. Laban welcomed Jacob into his house. Jacob stayed with Laban and worked for him. After about a month, Laban said, What should I pay you for all of your work? Now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah and the younger one was named Rachel. Well, Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will work for you for seven years if you let me marry Rachel. So Laban agreed. Jacob worked for seven years, but he loved Rachel so much that seven years seemed like only a few days. And I don't know if that's true, but it's in the story, so I'll read it. Um, seven years is seven years, guys. Um, but anyhow, then Laban had a feast. But instead of giving Rachel to Jacob, the one he loved, Laban gave his older daughter Leah. Jacob was so upset. He said, why did you trick me? He asked. Laban said, around here, the older daughter must be married before the younger. I will give you Rachel too, he said, but you must work another seven years. So all together, guys, he worked 14 years. So a week later, I don't know why he says a week later, um, after the seven years, maybe, um, he married, Jacob married Rachel, the one he loved. Then he worked, um, so yeah, that was kind of off. Now Jacob had two wives, but he loved Rachel more than Leah. When God saw Leah was not loved, he gave her children. Okay, Rachel wanted children too, and God heard her prayer, and in time, God gave her children too. Um, so in all, Jacob had 12 sons. He had 10 with Leah and two with Rachel, and Rachel's um, sons came later on. The names of those 12 boys of Jacob's were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, and then uh, Joseph and Benjamin were Rachel's. Um, God told Jacob to go to the home, go, go home to the land of Canaan. So Jacob gathered his family and his possessions and he headed home. So the connection here, guys, is that nothing could stop God's plan for the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even though Jacob did not love Leah, God loved her and God planned to use her. Okay, through, th through their family, um, the family of Jacob and Leah, they had a son, Judah. God would show his love for the whole world by sending his son to be the savior that he promised. Okay, guys, so we're going to do the lesson, but I wanted to do a quick fun fact um, about sheep. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but if you worked with sheep, and my phone is ringing, hang on. It was a scam likely, so I didn't answer. Let me pause. I mean, mute my phone. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so the fun fact about sheep is if you work with them on a regular basis, that sheep can 
learn your voice, that they can recognize the voice of the shepherd. Pretty cool, huh? So let's get started um, with the big picture question. I don't know if you guys remember it from last week, um, but if not, I'm going to ask you it again, and I will do every time we um, I do the lessons. It says, does God keep his promises? And the answer is yes. God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. Okay, guys. Um, so this Bible story I mentioned earlier will be found in Genesis chapters 29 through 31. Um, so today's story definitely contained a lot of tricks. It seems that Jacob, the trickster from last week, remember his mama and him tricked their the dad, um, Isaac, into blessing him? Okay, seems like um, Jacob met his match in his uncle Laban because his uncle Laban also tricked him, which Laban happened to be Jacob's mother, Rebe yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca and Laban were brother and sister. So probably around in the family that they were little tricksters. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see here. Jacob wanted to find a wife. After seven years of hard work, Laban tricked Jacob into marrying Leah and Rachel. He didn't trick him into marrying Rachel. He wanted to marry Rachel, but he tricked him into marrying Leah because she was the older one. At the end of the story, Jacob tricked Laban. So now Jacob's tricking his uncle um, by leaving with his family and flocks without telling Laban. Sadly, these tricks were dealing with people's lives and feelings definitely got hurt. Anytime these things, things like this happen, guys, you risk people getting their feelings hurt. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. All of these tricks showed times when Laban and Jacob did not trust God to keep his promises. Each person was trying to accomplish God's plan on his or her own. Okay, these people were living for their own plan. All right, and that's what I was just going to say really quickly um, is that when we try to rush God, if God gave you a promise, okay, we can trust that it's going to happen. All right, these people were um, given a promise, and for some reason, they felt that they needed to help God out and um, do what they needed to do to help bring along that promise, which all they ended up doing was making a mess. Now, God fixed the mess because God's plan is still going to take place, but the thing is, is that it wasn't necessary, and people were hurt because of it. And so um, we just have to understand, guys, that when God says something, he's going to do it. And that we just need to sit back, relax, and just be patient and wait on God's promise. Um, so let me find my place here. Um, God had a better plan for Jacob. God had chosen him to be, a fam the, be the family leader, to teach the next generation to follow God too. When we trust God, we don't have to try to control our lives. We can trust that God loves us. Does God keep his promises? Once again, yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. He is in control. We don't have to feel unloved like Leah did. Okay, God loves all of his children. In time, Jacob had 12 sons altogether. So let's count them um, as I say their names. There was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, and then Joseph and Benjamin. And remember, the two youngest ones were from the wife that jo uh, Jacob loved. Um, their mother was Rachel. Um, so the the thing I want to I want you guys to understand that despite all of the tricks and all of the deception and everything that was going on, nothing could stop God's plan for the family of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Even though Jacob did not love Leah, God loved her and used her in his plan. Through that family of Jacob and Leah's son Judah, God would show his love for the world by sending his son to be the savior his, he promised. So the unloved wife had a child. She had 10 actually. Um, and one of her sons by the name of Judah would be like the great, 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 I don't know how far back, grandfather um, of the family line of Jesus. So God used Leah, even though she, her husband didn't really love her like he loved um, Rachel, um, God still used her in his plan 
Okay, so I think that's pretty cool because it doesn't matter what is happening or what takes place. God is always in control. And that should give us some um, hope and some peace knowing that God is always in control and he's faithful. Okay, guys, moving on, I want to um, go over the key passage with you guys. It's a new one. It's a big one. Um, hopefully, you guys will um, take the opportunity to um, memorize it, get it in your heart. Um, but this um, key passage for this unit, it'll be the same for all of the lessons, is uh, found in Genesis chapter 28, 15. And it says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Okay, so that's the key passage, guys. Okay, and so um, I want to clarify who's who because we introduced a few new people. Um, so I, let's just go over it real quick so that way you guys have an understanding. Um, who is Jacob's uncle? Um, I'm just going to say Laban was Jacob's uncle, okay? Um, Laban was the one he worked for. Leah was the older daughter. Leah was Laban's older daughter, okay? Um, Rebecca, I'm sorry, Rachel was also Laban's daughter, but she was the second daughter. Um, but she was the, the daughter that Jacob loved, okay? So Leah was the older daughter. Um, Rachel was the daughter that Jacob loved, and she was also the younger daughter. And then Jacob worked for Laban in total uh, 14 years um, for both of his wives, Okay, so hopefully um, that clears anything up. If you guys, I know you guys are so smart and you guys have probably figured it out that Jacob married his cousins. Yeah, kind of crazy. It was a different time back then, guys. Um, but yes, um, that's who he married. And he, he um, yeah, so anyways, moving on. Um, we heard in our Bible story today how Laban tricked Jacob into marrying Leah and Rachel. Jacob did not want to marry Leah. He only wanted to marry Rachel. God had a better plan for Jacob and Leah. Leah and Jacob had a son named Judah, and God chose to continue his promise through Judah's family. Through Judah's family, God would show his love for the world by sending his son to be the savior he promised. Okay, and once again, guys, does God keep his promises? Yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask you guys a few questions and I will be clicking back and forth to my scriptures. So the first question is, is God's plan always happens? How does knowing this help you face difficult or unexpected events in your life? Um, the scripture is found in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. And it takes a second. There we go. It says this. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Okay, so um, I want you guys to understand that. Let me reread the question. How does knowing this, that... Um, God's plan always happen. God's plan always happens. How does knowing this help you face difficult or unexpected events in your life? Well, right now, guys, we are going through a difficult and unexpected event. Um, so how can that help us um, knowing that God's plan always happens? Well, we can trust that God is good and that he loves us, guys. Even if things don't make sense, even if things are frustrating or worrisome, we can always trust God because he's good, guys. He doesn't give us bad at all. All the bad comes from the enemy, which is the devil. Okay, John 10.10 10 says this. It says, the thief, which is the devil, comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Okay, but I have come that you might have life. Okay, and the I is God, Jesus, that you might have life and life more abundantly. Okay, Every good and perfect gift comes down from God. God doesn't send bad, okay? So we can trust 
Um, and we can that can help us because we know we can trust God because God is good and that he loves us, guys. Um, when life doesn't go according to our plan, it always goes according to God's plan. Even if we think, um, you know, this doesn't make sense or things are, um, you know, not good, don't worry. Try not to worry because God is still in control. <clears throat> we can trust him even though we don't always understand his ways. Um, God's ways and the way he thinks and the way he loves and the way he does things are above our ways, guys. So rather than trying to make sense of everything, let's just relax and let's just trust him um, because God is faithful. Okay, second question, guys, is how much does how much does God love you and how do you know? This one, um, this scripture is in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. And it says this, it says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Okay, so um, I want to remind you guys, if you if you remember from um, the first unit, um, God is our creator and king. Yeah, it was the first unit. Um I want you guys to recognize that God's greatest display in love was sending Jesus to die the death that we deserve for our sin so that we can live with him forever. Think about it this way, and I know I've said this before. There is no way, no way that I would ever send any of my children, okay, to die for people who love me or hate me, okay, um, but especially for people who hate me, um, would spit at me and, and curse at me um, and reject me, I would never, 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 never send my child to die for someone like that, let alone, you know, even, it, even for someone who would love me, okay? Um, but God did, all right? Because God knew that the only way that we could be redeemed and brought back to him was through the sacrifice of his son because his son was perfect and blameless and 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 sinless and that was the only way we could be redeemed and so God knew what he had to do and he was willing to do that to sacrifice his only son on a cross a gruesome painful death for you and for me okay um and we all know guys that people hate God, that people um, will make fun of you if you claim to be a Christian. Um, even for those people, guys, God died for, Jesus died for, God sent his only son. Okay, that's a lot of love. That's agape love. That is a love that is just, that's a big love. Okay, and God does love you. And you can know that because um, he did that for you. Okay, so we don't have to question or whether or not God loves us. Um, he does. And his desire is for us to receive Jesus and for us to tell others and that we can um, be in heaven together um, one day. All right, so the third and final question is this. It says, how can we show love to people who are lonely or misunderstood? That one is in 1 John 4, 7. Oh, no, I think I closed it out. Hang on, guys. Yeah, I did close it out. I don't know why. But here it is. 1 John 4, 7 says this. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Okay, so the question, how can we show love to people who are lonely or misunderstood? I want you guys to think about it this way. Consider how um, you want to be treated. Okay. We all want to be treated kind and nice and for people to share with us and to say good things about us and to us, okay? Excuse me. So if we want that, then guys, we have to give that, okay? And the thing is, is when you ask Jesus in your heart, God came to live on the inside of you. And that scripture just told us that God is love. Okay, so if God is love and he lives on the inside of us, then guys, we have what we need to be able to love others. Well, you might think, well, they're mean to me. They, they, um, I'll only love them if, um, 
they love me. And if they're mean to me, then I'll be mean right back to them. Well, guys, that's not God's love. God's love is unconditional. That's a big word, okay? Unconditional means without conditions. A condition is this. A condition is saying, um, if you do this, then I will do that. If you don't do this, then I won't do that. For example, um, if you... If you um, are nice to me, then I will be nice to you. But if you're mean to me, then I'm going to be mean to you. That's called conditions, guys. God doesn't do that. I just said a second ago that even the people that hate God, that are not going to receive God, that make fun of you for being a Christian, God still loves them. God didn't say, okay, well, you don't love me, so I ain't going to love you. God didn't say that. God died for everyone, the, the ones that are going to receive him and the ones that aren't going to receive him. That's called unconditional love. And that's why I said that, that God's love is a big love. Um, and sometimes it's hard for us to understand that kind of love because we do do so many things conditionally based on how others treat us, guys. But I tell you what. God doesn't want us to love that way. God wants us to love those who are lonely and misunderstood. And oftentimes, guys, people who are lonely and misunderstood, um, they might be mean to you. And I tell you because they, they probably are mean because people have been mean to them. And they don't want to get hurt anymore. And so that's, that's what they do is they'll be mean back. And so um, those people especially need love. So if we have God living on the inside of us, and that scripture tells us that God is love, then we have everything we need to love those that are unlovable. Okay, so just remember that, that um, we can share God's love with everyone, and God wants us to. The Bible tells us that, um, how will they know that you're a Christian? And the answer to that is by your love for one another. If you go around hating people and being unkind to people, that's not a very good way to tell others about Jesus. You might not know what to say or you might not know a scripture or anything. But I tell you what, if you just are kind and you love people, even when they're mean to you, guys, they're going to be scratching their head thinking like, what's up with this kid what the heck that doesn't make any sense i just cussed him out or i just threw a rock at him or i just i i pulled their chair out from underneath them and they fell and you're still able to be kind to them and not do something back to them guys that's going to get their attention they're going to say wow and then you can say i love jesus i'm a christian and things and god will work it out but our job is just to love and um, to work at doing that because, guys, it doesn't come easy. I, I know that for myself personally, I struggle with that. So, um, but it's something that we should do and that God has called us to do because we've received God's love. We should also um, be free with giving um, God's love out. So, um, guys, I hope you guys are getting some good things out of these lessons. Um and I hope you guys, your parents are printing out the activity pages for you. If you are having a problem getting those printed, then just let me know. I'd be more than happy to print it for you. I got a big old printer. If you guys notice behind me, I'm. this is my, I, I already homeschool. You guys already know that, but this is my office and this is my homeschool room. Um, you guys can see behind me a little bit that up there on the ceiling, I guess, is snow. I had... Um, snowflakes hanging from the ceiling because I love Christmas and you guys know I love Christmas so we decorated that probably like in October and uh, just recently took them down but that's what it looks like behind me guys I've just got the calendar and and different things like that but if you're wondering what that is that's icicles hanging from my ceiling and I don't really remember why I started talking about that but um oh I this is my office so I have a big printer um, it's a laser printer. It'll print it like that. I No problem, guys. Um, I want to just to make sure that you guys are doing your lessons and um, uh, having everything that you need. So um, keep in mind, let me just double check something here. Um, yes, uh, next Sunday is technically the first Sunday and there would not be any Kids Town. So I am 
not sure if I'm going to do a lesson or not. I'd like to get one of the other teachers to do a lesson maybe. Um, we'll see if I can get that, um, make that happen. But um, either way, guys, if you're a May birthday and, um, you know, I want to make sure I, I do um, the shout outs for you for May. My birthday's in May, May 6th. Um, so maybe, I don't know. Anyhow, um, just let me know if you've got a birthday coming up in May, send me an email, uh, comment on the video. That's how I found out about Lila's birthday. I'm checking those guys. So, um, that way, um, we can sing happy birthday to you guys and do all that. So I want to just end real quick. I was looking for it. Nope. It's down here. Um, with the prayer. And so right now, guys, I would like for you guys just to close your eyes, be reverent um, while I pray. Um, Lord God, thank you for your word. Through the Bible, we can see that you have so much love for us. When even, uh, even when others are unloving to us, your love never changes. God, and we thank you for that. Help us to share your love with others, especially those who may feel lonely or misunderstood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, uh, I love you, um, and I hope I hopefully we'll see you soon. Talk to you later.